Hello. It's the 18th of July and today I'm going to harvest the onions. Conventionally onions are harvested when half of the big leaves have bent in half. Um, th three days ago they were all upright here and uh, but I still intended to harvest a day for a couple of reasons. One of them is the onions are a good size now some are quite big others are a little bit smaller there's a good distribution you don't always want huge onions for cooking with so there's a good distribution of, of sizes um, also it's going to be very hot today that's why I'm partially in shade at the moment it's eight o'clock in the morning and I'm trying to get as much done in the garden as I can before the real heat of the day sets in but the real heat of the day is going to be very useful for drying off these onions because the first stage of the process after I've harvested them is to leave them in the sunshine in order for the roots to dry out as quickly as possible the other reason I'm harvesting them as soon as I can this year is less positive. Last year when I grew them in another bed in the garden um, I lost uh, probably about a quarter of them to white rot fungus which is a fungus that can remain in the soil even if there's uh, no onions there um, for they say between 8 and 20 years and it's impossible I gather to eradicate it causes um, a sort of white fluffy fungus on the base of the onions it stunts the roots and um, it was possible to use some of the onions that were affected in that way but there's no way that they can be stored anything that's being stored be it apples pears squashes whatever if it's not absolutely perfect when it's put into storage it won't keep it it'll rot in due course so I've planted the onions this year in a totally new bed that's not been used for onions before and I'm hoping by taking them out early um, that I won't have any indication of uh, white rot fungus on them I have read that um, beds that are affected by white rot fungus can be watered at this time of year with a garlic um, preparation maybe crushed garlic or something in water because apparently the fungus activates when it detects the chemicals that are in onions it also applies to leeks and other alliums apparently when it detects the character the chemicals that give them their characteristic smell so the idea is that if you water garlic onto the garden the fungus will activate and then will die because it's got no um, alliums to attach to I don't know whether that works or not I can't really try it on the bed where the onions were last year because it's got sweet corn in at the moment but it may be something worth experimenting with but for the moment the thing is to see how these onions are getting on I haven't dug any up yet so it's uh, <coughs> this is the first test of whether we have any problems this year right Oh, well, that's good. That's a uh, good root system on that. No signs of rot. That's a good solid onion. So the next thing I'm going to do is to place all these, dig them all out, place them all in the sunshine with the roots pointing at the sun and let them dry out. I'm not going to wash them or anything. I'm just going to knock the earth off with my fingers and then leave it at that. So now to harvest the rest. Well, that's a reasonably good harvest, and now we'll just let them dry off in the sunshine. Unfortunately, about six were showing signs of white rot fungus. This is what the fungus looks like. You get this white, fluffy material, and the roots have 
disintegrated. I think I will try that experiment of watering the soil with some form of garlic mixture or onion mixture or something that contains the chemicals that um, allegedly trigger the fungus so with the idea that um, that would activate the fungus and then it would die because there was no allium for it to infect. The other thing I think I might do next year is to try to harvest earlier. I had intended to do that this year but one thing that is noticeable and remember I'm not an expert on this because I've not got a lot of experience in it um, is that when you've got these lovely big roots on a typical sized onion there's no um, white rot so the the white rot then causes the disintegration and and dying back of the roots so maybe earlier harvesting would catch it before it got really bad. Anyway, in relation to this one, it's not going into the compost heap, um, otherwise we'll end up spreading infection, so we need to dispose of that in some other way. It's been a few days since that image of them all laying on the concrete patio, drying in the sunshine. That evening I took them all and laid them on the floor of the workshop. That way they remained inside and it's very hot in there when the windows are closed so it can continue their drying out as well. Some people talk about taking them out of the ground and leaving them for four or five days but with British weather it could rain upon them again and even the morning dew it seems to me could make them wet so once they start drying I guess it's better for them to continue to dry. What I'm doing now is tying them together to string them up to store them and I found that this particular method although it's not very complicated um, helps the good ones to store over the winter. We're still using them in the new year sometimes if we've got enough to last that long. But also, although I've taken out the ones that are obviously bad or suffering from rot in some respect, I've also found that if any of them on the strings that I'm about to show you how to put together are um, rotting it doesn't seem to affect the others on the strings so that's actually quite good if there's a bad one from time to time on the string you can just cut it off and carry on with the others now how to tie up the strings what I've got here is half a dozen onions I choose them of various sizes so that each string has a variety of sizes of onions on them. What I'm going to do is in a sense do a kind of cheat version of the traditional way of plaiting the onions together. I did try to plait them at one stage but I found it was an incredibly difficult thing to do. It's hard to do if you do it too early because these are still very wet and it's difficult to do if you do it too late because they fall apart. So in the end I decided I would leave that to the onion experts and um, compensate with string. So what I do, I have one at the bottom, next one up there so the bulbs are clear of each other and then I just tie a piece of string to knot them together and strangely enough even when they dry out, some occasionally <laughs> drop out, but generally speaking, um, when they dry, um, they still stay together hung up. The next one I put on the other side, cut off another piece of string, and then tie that around the foliage and the neck of the onion at that point. There's another one which I'll put on the other side there. And the same thing, I'll tie that to 
to the onion and to as much of the greenery as is reaching that point. There's another one on the other side, that's number five. And finally number six, for which I will use a slightly longer piece of string. Because when that's knotted in position, I'm going to tie this into a loop and that gives me something to hang the string from. What I do now is take these into the workshop and hang them from the roof beams in the workshop. They can remain there until they are needed. They will dry off nicely now. It's a nice cool dry place to keep them over the winter and all we do is take them a string at a time into the house as needed. Anyway, as ever, I hope you found something useful in this video and thank you very much for watching.